Good morning. Penal fractures, plaster cast. Well, <clears throat> it's interesting when you're given a topic like that because you naturally look back through your old x-rays to see if you can find something. And it's difficult to find a pelon fracture treated in a plaster cast. So you ask your colleagues, how many pelon fractures have you treated in a plaster cast? And you get a negative response. So just out of interest, how many people in the room have treated what they would regard as proper pelon fractures in a cast alone? So there's, there's, some, there's some experience. Now, if you look to see when, when it might... Press the right button. If you, look, if you look about this as to when people might treat a pelon fracture with, with a cast alone, it tends to be if there's no displacement at all or if the patient is almost moribund and you can't be bothered, yeah, bothered is the wrong word, uh, and, you, and, and, and you feel that uh, an operation isn't, isn't, intervention isn't appropriate. So for actually for the, the, the fractures that we're going to talk about for the rest of the time, there's probably very little experience as to what goes on. So the only, I looked for x-rays all I could find, and there was this we had just recently, flick it round, that's a pelon fracture. It goes in, it's actually unstable, but you look at that and you think, I could treat that in a cast if it's not, if it's not going to move. And I don't think that's a, a contentious issue. You may, you may wish to do that. What bothered me, what bothered me was the ones that we're going to talk about now the, 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 the regular pelon fractures in the elderly, we got little experience of it. So I like to have this, this notion of a, of a graph as to what your, what your life's going to be like. It can be more or less whatever you wish. So the, the, upward, the upward axis is some quality and time is at the bottom. And at some point you're going to deteriorate, it's going to fall down and then you're going to cross the zero line and you're going to die. And that, you know, that's your life mapped out for you. If you get an injury, Sim it's simple, simple but works. So you get an injury superimposed on that, and at the beginning here, you get a period where your, whatever that score is there, deteriorates. And you presume it's going to get a bit better, and then it's going to get worse and you die. And it might be that you die a bit sooner, it might be that you have some problems here, it might be that in that early phase there, so you can split that up to a, a recovery phase, a functional phase, and a degenerative phase. And when you're looking at a patient talking to them about what their problem is and how you're going to manage them, you can have this picture in your mind as to, as to what their life was before. Now they've had their injury, what's going to happen to them? So how the hell do we consent a patient? How do you consent a patient for any of the operative procedures that you're going to hear about? Now, if somebody comes to you with hip pain that they've had for two years and it's been a misery to them and it's getting worse, and they sit there and they know what their, what their side of the bargain is, and you say, I can do an operation that will involve this, that, and the other. The re likely result of this is it's going to be whatever you like to tell them, and there are complications, and you can list those complications. And they can choose to weigh those against the problem that they know they already have, which has had a trajectory because it's been getting worse over the last two years. Person with the pelon fracture doesn't have that advantage. They're sat there, they were normal until yesterday. They've now got this fracture and they rely on you to tell them not only what the projected treatment is going to be, but what would happen if you did nothing or if you did very little to it, if you didn't have a big intervention. And so what we're doing is we're sitting in a room and we're going to advocate probably operative interventions and we do not know what the consequences are of not intervening. We don't know, we don't know that well. And you can feel yourself being drawn into a problem with that. I had a very, there was a very interesting presentation from Dave Beard to the Duthie Day, the Oxford meeting last year, talking about the lack of surgical studies that compare in any whether it be orthopaedics or, or, or general surgery, comparing operative with non-operative managements. We're very happy to compare two types of operation because they both keep us in business. But we're a little unhappier about knowing what the natural history is, lest it should be benign and we don't have a reason to do things. Or you can look at it cynically that way. So when you're sat there with this patient and you're consenting them for their, for their procedure and you're saying that, I can do an operation, there's, there's a chance that it will fail. Well, there's a fairly high chance, you know, this elderly pelon fracture, whatever you do to it, there's going to be a complication rate to it, and that might be one of the complications that you've got in your elderly pelon fracture. How do you balance that 
in relation to these curves if you don't know where the natural history lies. The natural history is really low, then all we, making it worse is unlikely. But if the natural history should not be too bad, then all of these consequences are going to push people below the line that they would have been at if you'd done nothing at all. So when we listen to the rest of the presentations, think how well could you explain to the patient what would happen if we were minimalist in our treatment compared to if we're directly invasive? And on what basis would you make that judgment? So can you give informed consent for an operative intervention when you don't really know the outcome of the non-operative interventions, especially when the procedure's got very high complication rates? So we'll listen to what others have to say with interest. Thank you. Thank you.